people with a smile on your face ready to worship, please say amen. Amen. Well, I hope, uh, I hope we're all looking forward to it. And I know I'm excited. I'm excited to get into the Word. I'm excited to pray, take of communion. It's a, it's a really wonderful thing. And it's especially exciting because I get to do it with my brothers and my sisters, who I love dearly. I want to thank everyone for joining us today, whether you're in person or online. Especially if you're a visitor, we're glad that you're joining us for our worship service today because it matters. It's, it's important and it means a lot to us that you chose to come here and to worship with us. And if you're a member, it is always great to see you. Always great to see you, once again, whether you're in person or online. Because uh, it, it's an encouragement. Your presence is an encouragement to all of us. So, at this time we're going to go ahead and begin our worship service. We're going to start with a prayer and then Brother Leon is going to take it away take it away. So if you don't mind, let's all bow as we begin our worship service. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you now at the beginning of this worship service, just asking that you be with us this hour. Be with us as we worship you, Lord. We're so excited. We are so thankful that we can be here and that we can take time out of our week to lift up praises to you, to, to, to study, to pray, to take what a beautiful thing it is. So we ask that you just continue to be with us. Lord, we close by saying we love you, we appreciate you, and we believe in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all say it we get Love divine, all love excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, in her every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit, let us find the promised rest. Take away the love of sinning, take our load of guilt away. In the work of thy beginning, bring us to eternal day. Finish then thy new creation, pure unspotted may we be. Let us see our whole salvation, perfectly secured by thee. Change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Be seated, but keep that same enthusiasm for worship. Majesty, worship His majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, power, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from His throne unto His own, His anthem raised. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Story 
our next song may be a little new, but we sing, I'm not ashamed to own my Lord. And that's the tune. So I want you to sing that with the same enthusiasm that you would, because this is one that expresses our praise. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. The glory of my God and King, the silence of His grace. My gracious Master and my stands before 
stands here before you in good health. He is the stone by which you rejected by you. He is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Well, it's a good question. Why would a person want to seek Jesus today? I have three points I want to make. I think they make the case. We have good news. We have a great need. We have a golden opportunity. I mean a grand opportunity. If I were to ask you bluntly, I wonder how you would respond. And I don't want you to respond now bluntly, out loud anyway, but in your mind. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? You say, well, I, it's a pretty easy question. It might be an easy question for us. Here we are at church. At least you've heard about Jesus. We're probably in, friendly, in, in a friendly environment. If you don't believe in Jesus, you might not say anything. You might be kind. But how would you talk to someone about that? What would you say? What would you say if they said, Yes, I believe in Jesus. Boy, you'd say, yeah, oh, right, that is great. I'm glad to hear that. We have a common element. What if they were to say, no? Well, let's think about that. Because when you look at this text, here are some apostles, Peter and John, who are preaching. And what are they proclaiming? Verse 2, they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. I'll tell you, that's not a popular topic in our time. Many people will scoff at Christians for believing in the resurrection. And if it doesn't do any good in this life, why in the world are we living in? Or if you're just living for the pie in the sky, aren't you naive? What if it's wrong? All of those are good questions. We face those. It does seem like the world in which we live is turning further and further away from Christianity. And if you're growing up, you might not catch the importance of what's taking place, but I'd like to talk to you about the good news. We do have good news. In Acts chapter four, this, this is what happened. Here's the situation. Peter and John go to the temple at the gate that's called beautiful in Acts chapter three. And here is a lame man who is sitting at the gate asking for a gift. You've seen them. He could have put out a sign, need work or need food, whatever. You've seen more than that, but this was not the situation. This man was crippled and he was going to find generous people. Where do you find generous people? Religious people should be very, very receptive. And so he did. He went and he was asking for alms. The man was, had been lame for 40 years, the text tells us. And he's asking for money. Can you imagine what it would take? To be in your 40s asking for money and not having any way of making a living, wouldn't it be hard? Peter said, I don't have silver. What I do have, I'm going to give to you. Take up your pallet and walk. And the man, I would have loved to have seen this, stood up and started. He didn't walk. He was walking and leaping. And what was he doing? He was praising God and everyone saw what is happening. And who knows what is happening? People started coming in and they, they were attracted to the gospel. Why was it? God was at work. It was a miracle. God performed this miracle through Peter. And this man walked and now everyone is coming. Acts 2 has 3,000 being baptized. Acts chapter 5 has now... 5,000 men being baptized and people are saying, why can't we do that again? Well, well, the situation is much different. We had a lot of Jews who were looking for a Messiah and they were informed Jews, but boy, those things won't happen. We don't have those kinds of miracles, but the, the message of the apostles would be, we do have good news. And what is that good news? God is still at work. In fact, that's what they were saying at that time. 
God is doing great things. He is doing it through his son, Jesus Christ. And they were proclaiming him. Who is the one that they proclaimed? Well, you see, by what power or in what name have you done this? Verse 7 of chapter 4. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Rulers and elders of the people, if we're on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel, but that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands here before you in good health. It's through Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about Jesus Christ. And people were coming to him. And oh, boy, that was good news. That is good news. Do you believe that God working is good news? Uh, let me tell you why. I think it's going to impact your response to it. If you don't think it's good news, it won't be good news. Uh, Peter put it this way, 1 Peter chapter 2. So put aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. That's pretty specific. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk. The word pure means unmixed. That by it you may grow up into salvation if, if you have tasted that the Lord is good. If. That's a pretty big if. You say, I haven't tasted the Lord is good. You might look around and just say, have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? How have you been blessed? The Lord has been good, hasn't he? Well, the psalmist put it this way. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, reverence the Lord, literally. You, his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The psalmist said, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And that's what one psalm speaks of, how God works. It's something that comes down through generations. Paul would say it this way when he writes to young Titus. He said, for we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. Doesn't that sound like our world? We just grow up hating entire countries. We just hate them. Where are you from? Oh. And then if you're from America, you go, oh, you take the stigma with you. But when the kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, which I think happens when a person is baptized into Christ, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus, our Savior. Salvation is something to be grateful for. And that's why there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. That's why being a Christian brings with so We just don't even recognize all the blessings that we have. So I have come up with a way personally, and I don't know if you want to do this. Mark Condor read this last week, and I just delayed it one week. I said, I want to do this. I have a, a little challenge to myself to, of memorizing Romans 5, 1 through 5. Paul is essentially saying we stand under grace even though we don't understand grace. We stand under grace. We're filled with grace. But what does that mean? So I went through this passage and I just said, well, I, I wonder if you just highlighted the number of times it's talking about us collectively as brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you're in Christ, you're my brother or sister. You may not like me, but I'm your brother. Just telling you, you're stuck because we're in the family of God. So I went through and highlighted the number of times. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. When was he given to us? When we were baptized into Christ. I just want to keep emphasizing that we met Christ, we met the blood of Christ at the point at which we were baptized into Christ, according to the Bible. That's why it's so important. It's not the end of our salvation trip, it's the beginning of this great journey. But then, here's just what I want to do, and I want to challenge you to do this with me today. I want you to go through, and in your own Bible, you can do it either way you want to. You can memorize this. But I didn't want to make it a collective uh, devotional. I, my challenge to me is to memorize it with the personal pronoun, me. So, I went through, and everywhere there's a we, I put I, or me. I'd like you to read this with me. See if it doesn't make a difference. As you read this, think in terms of it's still us, but we do include ourselves, don't we? We're there. So let's say this together. Therefore, since I have been justified by faith, I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, I have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which I stand. And I rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. More than that, I rejoice in my suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put me to shame, because God's love has been poured into my heart through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to me. No shame. The Holy Spirit is living within me. God is living within me. That's good news. That means I have been saved by grace. God is walking with me each day. And if you come across someone that doesn't have that, you got to tell them the story. So when you're talking about this, there is good news that I've got to share. And so I want us to sing about this. If the name of the Savior is precious to you, if his care has been constant and tender and true, if the light of his presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell of your gladness today? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? If the light of his presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell it? If your faith in the Savior has brought its reward, if the strength you have found in the strength of your Lord, if the hope of a rest in his palace is sweet, oh, will you not, brother, the story repeat? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? If the light of presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell it today? We not only have good news, let me tell you, we have great need. You say, what need? We have a need. The world has a great need for the Lord, and we have a great need to tell it. We have a great need to tell individuals about Jesus. And I look at this text and I see what is happening here. We need a lot of help here because we're talking about people who are in need. Look at verse 13. Now, as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were marveling and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Now, that's a big statement. Wow, I've written in my Bible. Wow, that's interesting. As having been with Jesus. They saw that they were, now these were not illiterate men. Peter and John were not illiterate. They were individuals who were untrained, going before a Sanhedrin, going before a religious group, and they didn't know exactly. They weren't doing it like everyone else was doing it. They recognized it as one person called it a non-professional. And they knew that they were different. 
But think about it. They had spent three and a half years with Jesus, walking with him every day. As he walked, he would talk with him. He would talk with each one of them. He would ask questions. And you know, as they walked, he would probably ask a question. They would respond and he would just keep walking and walking and walking. And it would have been a great way just to listen to him as he taught. When did he come back with an answer? The Bible doesn't tell that. But I look at this and I'm saying, well, isn't this interesting? They're talking about what is happening here. And now, verse 14, seeing the man who had been healed standing with him, they had nothing to say in reply. When they ordered them to go outside of the council, they began to confer with one another. And this is what they're saying. What shall we do with these men? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place through them is apparent to all who live in Jerusalem. We can't deny that. But in order that it may not spread any further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to any man in this name. And when they summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Now, isn't that fascinating? The very ones that should have been working with the apostles, the religious leaders of the Jews, are saying, we've got to suppress this. Why is that? If this gets out, everyone will be coming. So what we have to do is suppress it. Just keep it down. Stifle it. How would they do that in 2022? Let me tell you. Just mock these Christians. If we just keep blistering them with accusations and mockery, you put your faith in who? Ha! You're a Christian? Oh, that's so comical. Is that what you do with your money? You just give it away? Is that what you do? And a Christian says, you know what money is? It's just a tool. It's just a tool. When you leave, you leave it all here anyway. It's what you do with it. Why you've got it here, that's the issue. And what they're telling me, we just be quiet. But you know what the apostles said? Oh, no, we're not going to stifle it. We're going to shout it. Just read this text, verse 18 or 19. Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it's right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking what we have seen and heard. And when they had threatened them further, they let them go, finding no basis on which they might punish them on account of the people, because they were all glorifying God for what had happened. For the man was more than 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. I can remember the time. Maybe you can, too. When you heard this story for the first time, I was thinking, 40 years old, man, he is old. And now I'm reading this saying, 40 years old, man, this guy is young. He's really young, but 40 years old. And now he is standing there next to them. And instead of getting excited about it, they're the ones saying this, and we need to stifle it. The apostles said, we need to shout. And if you'll notice what they did, boy, they didn't just mess around with this. Verse 23, when they had been released, that is these apostles, they went to their own companions, probably other apostles in that context and reported all that the chief priest and the elders had said to them. Do you know what they did? They found spiritual companions when they were mocked or when they felt like they were tested. They found spiritual companions. Verses 24 through 30 is nothing more than a prayer. We are reading their prayer. Uh, as Luke includes this prayer, we're seeing that they are asking for God to help. And they're encouraging each other Till you get down to verse 31, when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. And that's why many think those were the apostles. They're all filled with the Holy Spirit and they started speaking the word of God with boldness and they started working. And I think that's where I'd say, well, that's where we ought to be. We ought to be finding the ones with boldness, not stifling it. If we really did understand the power of God and the beauty of all of this, and we were convicted, the word we're using this year is if we're committed, we're going to share that message. And then think of this song that we sing sometimes. This is the second verse about the people to whom we are, we are singing. And what are we supposed to do? We're, we're singing about people to whom we live with. 
Let's sing this verse. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they truly believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings like Mary that grace can restore. Touched by a loving hand, wakened by kindness, cords that were broken will vibrate once more. Jesus would save, and if we truly love the people with whom we are, are associating each day, wouldn't, wouldn't we want to reach out to them and try to bring them back? Seeking the lost and appointing to Jesus, souls that are weak and hearts that are sore, leading them forth in ways of salvation. Showing the path to life and reward. Building a fall upon the mountain. Bringing the fall under that Into the fold of my great need, a need to tell and a need to hear. We have a grand opportunity, grand opportunity. Let me just explain. And this is where I really want you to get involved. If you have one of the sermon sheets that I put in the back, you have a space that's already been provided. If you didn't get it, get it next week. But if you do have a piece of paper, get something out. I want you to write something down. I'm going to give you a challenge. Now we have a challenge in the booklet, but this is a different one. I want you to know that 2022 is the most important time of all time. This is it. We couldn't have picked a time that's better to do what we're going to do than, than right now. You say, why 2022? Because it's right now. The past is gone. It's just gone. We remember it. We remember fondly the things that took place in the past. It's not bad. It's good. Right now, we're, we're working in the present because the past can't be changed. People that decided to live for the Lord lived for the Lord. They gave their lives, and we think of them. It may be your parents, your grandparents that gave their lives for the Lord. It may be that no one in your family knew about God. I'm, I'm telling you, if they had known about God, maybe they would have acted differently. I don't know. I'm not the judge. But I do know that it's appointed a man wants to die and after this the judgment. So everything that took place in the past can't be changed. No use dealing with that. But here we are. We're in the present and we're going to impact the present right now. Everyone around whom we live 
and we're going to influence the future. So you're doing it right now. This is the most, if you want to make a change, this is the time. We're at the beginning of 2022, last day of January or last Sunday. But I do know we're at the time when you're saying, okay, this is the point at which we will influence the people that you live. Right now, you're making memories, aren't you? You have children or grandchildren, you're making memories. So I don't know if I'm making memories. Well, think back. I can remember in my life, and that's the only life I've lived. But in my life, I can remember the first memories at church. Can you? My memories, as I was thinking about this, I remember with my head in my mother's lap, looking up at the acoustical tile that was in the, in the ceiling of the church building. It was the old white, I mean, the old with just little punched holes. I now know what that was. At the time, I was like, why are there holes up there? I remember thinking that. I don't know. I, you know, I had to be pretty young because I didn't, I didn't lay my head in my mother's lap very long, but I'm just saying there was that. And I remember what the ladies restroom looked like at the church I attended because I was taken out there quite a bit to be corrected and brought back in. You know, that was the way it is. Those are my early memories. But you know, I have a rich, rich, rich memory of being at church. Sometimes it was dark because it was night. Sometimes early in the morning. You're making memories now and you You'll never get a chance to make that memory again. You've got this one moment in time. And your children, your grandchildren will be thinking about what you did. So here we are. Well, what is more important than leaving a heritage of someone who said, I want to serve the Lord? By the way, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Didn't I ask you that? But do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Could they tell that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God without your telling them that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Could your children or grandchildren tell that you believe that Jesus, by the words you say, by the places you go, by the things you watch, by the things you buy? I'm just asking, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Well, if you do believe that, the people that you're around, wouldn't you like to get some help from them? Or wouldn't you like to help them so that they could live forever? And this note, I guess, here's, here's my question. I want you to think of three people that you know of. This week, don't write anything down and don't say it out loud. Don't, just think of three people. Three people that you think needs to know about Jesus. Salvation is in found nowhere else but through Jesus Christ. Couldn't, would they know it? If you were to say, do you believe in Jesus? Would they know it? Three people. I'm, I'm going to challenge you today to this week. Think about those three people. And I'd like you to put down three sets of initials on that paper. Just write the initials. If you're going to talk to me because you think I need help and I do, you'd put DP. DP. Put down three sets. And then I challenge you to if the name of the Savior is precious to you, won't you tell it? How would you tell it? Just tell it. If the things he's done has made a change in your life and the kindness of God is found nowhere else, but would you tell it? So three initials and then here's the one question. When you talk to just this is this is as far as you have to go. Just these three. This week, I'm asking you to write down those three people only known to you. And you say, why three? Well, if you're in sales, you know that to get one sale, you might have to talk to 10 people. If you get one sale for 10, you know that in order to get 20, you've got to talk to, I mean, to get two sales, you've got to talk to 20. You've got to find out what your number is and how good you are. And so I know that's a way that it's done. So I would say, don't just do it one, because one is going to say something funny and you'll be turned off. At least give it three shots. And here's what you do. Don't, you don't have to teach it. Don't take your Bible. Don't walk in the Bible, but just ask this question. As you're walking along, working, hey, hey, hey. I've been wondering. Just a passing thought here. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? That's all you have to say. Boy, you stuck it out there now. You say, I don't want to talk about that. All right, what does that tell you about you? I'm, we're talking about our commitment now. What does that talk about you? Okay, I don't know if I'm committed. 
Just ask the question. You say, I don't know what they're going to say if they say, well, what does it say in Mark? Don't worry about that. Just, just this. If they say yes, yes, man, me too. Oh, wow, that is great, isn't it? And just, that's it. That is it. If they want to talk more, good. But yes, that's good. If they say no, or just scoff. Why would you ask me? You know what? I was just, I kind of have a goal this year to learn more about Jesus. That's so noncommittal. I just have a goal to learn about Jesus. I don't want to say, have you studied this passage and did you memorize and do you be ready to give an answer for everything? No, and I'm talking about just, I have a goal to learn more about Jesus. And if they say, me too. Hey, you know, that's great. We need to set up something. Let's just do that. That would be great, wouldn't it? And if they say, no, I don't want it. Well, you know, I, I'm just, that's just a personal goal for me. Sorry. Didn't mean to bring it up. Move on. That's it. What you've done is planted the seed. You know what you're going to do? When you plant that seed, people are going to be watching you. Now that guy's going to be watching you, which is great. Isn't that what we've been praying about? Oh, Lord, would they just look at how good a time we're having a church and come join us? No, what we want to say is if they could just see how great Jesus is, they would want to be a part of his body. That's the that's the call, because we're not perfect. You're not either. And if they laugh at you, say you a Christian. Well, I'll tell you, I think I need it. That's it. And that's what I would say. That's what I would say. But I know what you were like when you were young. Yes, sir. And that's before Christ. Those are the B.C. days. And now I'm in the A.D. Dave. This is the after Dave. So I'm in that part of my life now. So I'm I'm living another life. And so, you know, and I've made mistakes. I'm telling you, but I'm just a, I'm just wanting to be a Christian. That's it. I mean, if you're going to have to excuse, don't have don't have to take the blame. You're not perfect. Three people, three sets of initials. One question. Would you do it? Would you do it? If you'll do that, you'll say, well, I've got good news. Boy, we have a great need and we have a grand opportunity. We're going to start right now. Forget the past. It's gone. But boy, we can work on the present because we're going to change the future. And the future is right here. Here we go. We're marching in. And that's what I'm challenging you to do this morning. If you haven't given your life to the Lord, I'm asking you to think seriously about it. Give your life to the Lord. What do you do? You hear, believe, repent, confess. You're baptized into Christ to receive, and then you live a life of obedience. What do you do? You walk with the Lord. He's living within you. So that Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, is talking to you. I may not understand grace, but I stand under grace. And it's given to those who follow him. If you need a prayer, we'd love to help you, either publicly or privately. <laughs> and if we can help now, would you come? Bow together, we stand and we sing. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, for abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful Thank you, Dave, for giving us a, an opportunity and a way to share the name of Jesus, the good news about Jesus. Moving toward our communion time.
and we're talking about what Jesus has done. Dave will be leading us in some thoughts, but that's what this is about. This is my body. This is my blood. That's what Jesus said. When my love to Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I see, then in part I go to thee, God and heart testimony. There I walk amid the shade, while the lingering twilight fades. See that sun. desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Verse 17, then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. 19, he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup. After the supper saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. On this day, in this time, in these few moments, you will remember something about Jesus. This do in remembrance of me. I will. Each one of us will. You might remember his suffering. You might remember his resurrection. You might remember the tomb. Jesus begs us to do this in remembrance of him, and we do every first day of the week. I'm going to pray for the bread, then we're going to pause. And most of us will be thinking about something about Jesus and offering prayers up, maybe prayers of gratefulness for the resurrection maybe prayers of sorrow Jesus is interceding for us let's pray 
God, we can't fathom how you have a perfect plan for us. You're in control, total control. And as Dave shared in Acts 4, there's only one name through which we can come to you, and it's Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your plan, for bringing him to earth. Although he had to be crucified, Father, for the resurrection and the ascension and the return someday. Father, as we take this cracker, help us remember him, his life, his death, his resurrection, and that he came in bodily form and lived among men. Bless the bread. In Jesus' name, amen. He said in verse 19, this is my body which is given for you. Do this and remember to me. Likewise, he took the cup in verse 20. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's pray. Father, as we drink this juice, we, we realize that it represents your blood. <clears throat> and Father, we realize it requires shedding of blood for forgiveness. Father, for 2021, our, our goal is to be, I'm sorry, for 2022, Father, our goal is to be more committed through several areas. This month we've studied about Jesus the Savior. Father, as we reflect on our life, where we are today, and how we can become more committed, Father, help us to, to remember your sacrifice. If you weren't able to be at the breakfast yesterday morning, a lot of plans were laid out. Our financial budget, the goals, the money, we're a blessed congregation. At this time, we're going to pray and thank God for our blessings. And if you brought your contribution today, the gentleman in the back will take it as you leave. If you're at home, there are many ways to submit it. Pray with me, a prayer of gratitude for what we have. But more than that, how we'll use that this year to serve others. Father, we're grateful for the blessings you give us, life itself. And as Dave said this morning, all this money, it's just going to go away when I go away, going somewhere. I can't take it with me. Father, thank you for the opportunity to earn money. 
so that we can give to help others. Father, thank you for the gifts we'll offer today. Thank you for our blessings. Thank you for our family here. Father, we're just not worthy of what you do for us, but we're grateful. In Jesus' name. glad that you're here and if uh, you're a visitor with us we're thrilled that you're here if you're visiting with us online or joining us online as a member we're glad you're here too that's why we have the QR code you're also able to use if you're in the auditorium the cards if you'd like to and fill out your name we just like to know something about you and if we have a way we can help you uh, that would be great uh, if you did David mentioned if you missed the elders breakfast you missed a good one well it was not just good it was great not only the, uh, we are indebted to the elders, but their wives. We had just a great meal together, and then we had a great discussion. So it was, it was just wonderful. And if you weren't able to see it, my understanding is that it was recorded, and at some point it will be online. But regardless, we missed just seeing you and hope that you can learn the information. And there is some information out in the back in the south hallway if you wanted to know about what we're planning to do as a congregation. We're very blessed in many ways, as David said. And I would say at the top of that list, we talked about it yesterday, we're blessed with men serving us as elders who are looking out for the congregation. We thank God for them, and I hope you tell them you appreciate them as well. We're also blessed with deacons, and those deacons are putting together a ministry fair, and are at least a part of a ministry fair, and Joshua is going to tell us something about that right now, if you would. So we wanted to remind everyone in the congregation that we have our ministry fair coming up next week. It'll follow our second morning worship service. So right at 1130, we'll dismiss to the fellowship hall. The church is going to be providing uh, chicken, but we're asking members to bring other food items as well. If you're wondering what to bring, uh, check with your class. There's been some re recommendations that have gone out. We're really excited. We have a lot of different ministry leaders and deacons who are preparing uh, trifold boards in order to advertise their ministries. If, uh, if you are a ministry leader and would like your ministry to be uh, highlighted at the ministry fair, we ask you to do three things. One is to pick up a trifold board to decorate, which is sitting outside of the church office right now. You can grab those as we dismiss. Two, get a hold of Lucas or myself with uh, a two sentence description of what your ministry is. And then three, come up with a few ways that people in the congregation can come and help support your ministry and be ready to share those at the ministry fair. We're excited about it. We have so many wonderful things going on and we want everyone to know about what we have and different ways that you can serve your church family here and the community abroad. So be sure to plan on coming next Sunday morning. I mentioned at the eight o'clock service that those folks would need to go home, you know, they'll stay here and then go to Bible class and then go home. Many of them go to work, so that couldn't be a possibility. But uh, but you're here, so right, once we have our worship uh, ending here at 1030, we'll go right into the fellowship hall. It'll be great. The food is great. You know what goes great, just thought I'd mention this, what goes great with chicken is apple pie. If you, I just thought if you if you thought of that, that would be a good thought. And and I, Lucas said at first service, well, we just have fried chicken. I guess we've got our chicken. Well, baked chicken. I think you could do all kinds of chicken. Well, if you had something in your mind that you wanted to share, it'll be potluck, which means if, there's, if we're out of food, you're out of luck. But I think we're going to have a lot of food, so we want you to come and be a part of that. That's a great day. This is also the fifth Sunday of the month, and that means that tonight we will have our youth, generally speaking, we have our youth conducting the worship service, and they will be participating our young men will be participating and Joshua Adams our youth minister will be speaking tonight so you'll want to come at six o'clock they're not practicing this is worship so we're coming to worship God and then we can encourage them as they encourage us if you want to be encouraged come tonight at six o'clock Dave for his special challenge to us today. I like challenges. They, they keep me awake. They keep me focused. Uh, and in uh, this new year and the 
this new theme, we need to be focused. When you agree, take this challenge. Would you do it in front of Jesus if he was standing right there? That would be easier, wouldn't it? Well, he's standing right there. He's right there next to you. Always keep that in your mind this week as we look at that challenge. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we come to you with many things on our heart. The first and most important that's in our heart, Father, our hearts are full of praise for you. We praise and glorify you because you are worthy, worthy like no one else. No one else is so pure and perfect. No one else is all-powerful yet gracious and tender to his creation. No one else is eternal. It extends forever to those that are imperfect. Father, you are worthy, and we praise your name. Father, we still have on our minds yesterday's time at breakfast together, and um, we are reminded how good you have been to us at Germantown through the years. Thank you for the strong Christian leadership through the years, Father, as we've seen the blessings and the growth that you have caused to happen here. We're thankful for the families and personalities that you have caused to come to our number. We pray, Father, that as we begin executing our plans for 22, for this church and our community, you will continue to be there, guiding our thoughts and our actions. Father, we are concerned many in our a number that are struggling. They're struggling with physical issues and spiritual issues, Father, and loneliness. We pray a special prayer this morning for these individuals. Please lay your healing uh, and comforting hand on each one of them and their families. Father, we pray for Benny Aiken. We pray for Larry Eric. We pray for Andrea and David Bartley. We pray for Michelle Bradford, Lee Brassville, Randall Chandler, Ruth Evans, Walt Lipsy, Vivian Morris, Harold Petty, Peggy Reisner, Neil Shelton, Bob Straw, and Shannon Wilson. Other there are many others in our midst that are fighting uh, fighting COVID, Father. Many are doing it quietly these days, and uh, we pray that you will be with them in a special way. Give them physical strength, but give them spiritual strength as well as they're away from us. Uh, and we pray, Father, that uh, uh, this this variant will be will be gone soon, Father, and we can look back in years and understand your plan. But give us strength uh, to withstand it at this time, Father many things going on in this congregation, Father, that we want to remember in prayer as well. And as they're away from us, Father, we, we ask a special prayer for the Steiners. As they're in Honduras on a short-term mission, Father, we pray for their safety. We pray for their success. Father, we ask that you be with the Marceaux as they're making plans for their mission. Uh, and give them, uh, give them answers, Father. Give them um, success their plans as well, Father. We pray for the Malugas in Kiev with the political and military issues and unrest there, Father. They're unsure of what's going to happen next. We pray for a special peace for them um, and comfort, Father, that only you can give them. Uh, be with them in this hour. Father, we pray for Eddie and Madeline Lewis as they travel north Mississippi, Father, be with them and keep them safe in their travels. Father, we ask that you be with the Williams family in Canada as well, and that Canada needs you. They need your word. They need to understand uh, who you are, Father. Father, we want to also pray for the ministry fair that has been mentioned this morning, next week, that we may successfully communicate the needs in these ministries for help working for the Lord and help us to search our hearts, Father, as we look at these ministries and maybe creating other ministries, Father, that um, that we are doing these things for you, Father, and have 
that in our heart and understand how we can plug in and be fully committed, Father. We pray for that theme as we continue our prayer this morning, that we may continually challenge and test ourselves every day this week that's right in front of us that we can see that we are fully committed in you and if we're not Father help us to know what that looks like help us to search that out help us to be fully committed Father we pray these things in Jesus name Thank you, Steve. And as we close, we're uh, basically praying, but singing as well as to how we might do something for the Lord. And may we be the things that are in this song. Would you stand and then we'll be dismissed. May we see a shining light to the nation, a shining light to the peoples of the earth till the whole Oh, oh, oh.